Welcome back. Today we're going to complete the square in order to graph circles. So the problems from the homework that we'll be doing are number 1a, b, and then number 2a. So I chose these problems because they start easy, medium, and then really difficult. So um, stay with me and we should be good by the end of this, be able to finish the rest of the homework. So it's been a little while since we completed the square, um, but let's review a little bit of what that means. Okay, I have two examples here written down. And if I asked you to FOIL this out, uh, I hope that you would do something like this. x plus 3 squared does not mean x plus 3 times 2. Okay, that's something completely different. This power means, hey, take this guy and multiply him by himself. So you should get like this, and then we'll FOIL it out. Combine like terms. And you should be there. So hopefully without much help, you could do that yourself. Let's try um, the second one. Okay, so show the work. Try to do it without looking up. y minus 5 squared. And then combine like terms. Cool. So check if your answer looks like mine. So today I want to have a look at how we got from step one to the very, very last step, okay? How we got from the beginning to the end. And let's see if we can't come up with a trick um, to do it without any showing any of the middle work. Okay. So how do we get our first term? Well, look down here. How do we get this first term, x squared? Well, we squared x. We did x times itself, x times x. I got x squared. And then have a look at this 9. How did we get 9? Well, we multiplied 3 times itself. We got positive 9. And now the harder question is this. How did we get this plus 6 in the middle? How did we get that plus 6? Well, I want you to notice that there is an invisible 1 out in front of our x. And... If I'm just looking at these numbers, 1, 3, and 2, what could I do? What mathematical operation could I do with those three numbers that would give me 6? So what we could do is we multiply 1 times 3 times 2. And indeed, when we had written it all out, right before we combined our like terms, we had basically taken 3x, which we got by multiplying 1x and 3. And then we added it to itself. Hey, that means times it by 2. So what we're really doing then is I'm showing you a trick right now to how to go from what's called the completed square. Okay, I'm starting you off with a completed square. And then we're expanding it. So we're ending up in expanded form. Let's see if that trick works for our second example. So how did I get my first term? I took y and I multiplied them by itself. How did I get my last term? I took negative 5 and multiplied them by itself. I did negative 5 times negative 5. And how did I get this minus 10? Well, remember from last time, what we did is we multiplied 1 times negative 5, which is negative 5, times 2, because there were two of those terms and we had to combine them. And I got minus 10. So again, we took a completed square, and we've got it into expanded form. So now let me ask you this. Here's the challenge. If I gave you, let's just look at this first one. If I gave you x squared plus 6x, but I didn't give you the 9, and I asked you to go from expanded form into a completed square, could you figure it out? Well, let's see. 
If I didn't give you the 9, and I also notice I'm not giving you that 3 there, okay? I'm asking you to work backwards now. So let's remember, how did we get this 6, this plus 6? Oh yeah, weren't we basically multiplying this number? This number is always 1, so we can kind of ignore it. Weren't we always multiplying that number by 2? So what number should have been here if when I multiply it by 2 I got 6? To work backwards, to get the number that goes here, I just have to divide 6 by 2, which is 3. And notice that I, I'm circling the sign because it matters. So this would have been a plus 3. So if that's a plus 3, what would this last term be? Remember, we're going to square it. We're going to multiply by itself. So we're going to get positive 9. So again, we're taking this number, cutting it in half. So we're dividing it by 2. That's what it means to cut it in half. And then we square it. So 3 squared is positive 9. That goes right there. Let's try the second one. Okay. So to work, we want to work backwards. So what's the number that goes in here? Well, you're going to look at your middle term. That's negative 8. Cut that in half. Or divide it by 2. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. That's what goes here. Notice that this time we do have a negative sign. Okay, the sign matters. Look back at our first example right up here. Remember how we had a negative 10? So how do we get from negative 10 to negative 5? Well, we would divide by 2. Just the same way we got from positive 6 to positive 3. Okay, so we have a minus 4. Now think back, how do we always get that third term? Oh, we multiply that guy by itself. So we're going to square him. What's negative 4 times negative 4? That's plus 16. Now I'm saying something really important, so please pay attention. If this is positive or negative, that affects the sign inside of my completed square. But whether that's positive or negative, doesn't at all affect this sign. It's always going to be positive because I'm going to square this number. So positive 3 times positive 3 is positive 9. Negative times a negative is also positive. So this third term, I always know it's always going to be positive. So let's just take care of that right away. Okay, let's try this next example. See if you can figure out what goes in here. What do I do with my negative 2? If you said cut it in half, if you said divide it by 2, you'd be correct. So let's show our work. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. That goes right here. Square it. So we get a positive 1. And this and this are equivalent forms. They're the same thing. If I were to expand that guy, I would end up on the left. But remember, I'm asking you to do it backwards now. Okay, let's see if we can do the last example without filling in that guy first, okay? So with no help. So remember, we're going to take this middle term. We're going to divide it by 2. And then, what do I do with the 6? Do I put it here? No, 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 no. I have to square it first. I have to square it because that's how I get my third term. So that's going to be positive 36. We'll go back to the work you just did. 12 divided by 2 is 6. That goes on the, in our completed square. So that would have been y plus 6 whole squared. Don't forget the whole squared. And then you can check in the end. Do all your signs match up? Well, if this is positive, it's got to be positive. And no matter what, that guy's positive, so we're good. Look back at our previous example. If this is negative, that has to be negative. This is positive no matter what, so we're good. So here's the general rule. How to complete the square every time. I want you to always find that middle term, plus or minus b, okay? whether it's positive or negative. We take our b, that middle number, and we divide it by 2. Divide it by 2. Whatever that is, goes right here. But then what do we do to get this number? Well, 
you have to square that term. So take your plus or minus b over 2. So whatever that was divided by 2, I want you to square it now. So it's always going to turn into a positive version. All right, take down these notes and get ready for our first homework problem. Okay, it says for the equation of a circle, state the center and the radius. So I want you to recognize that this equation of the circle is right now in expanded form. To get the center and the radius, we need to complete the square so that it looks like this. So in order to get this from expanded form to the completed square form or standard form, let me write that in, that's good to know its name. So to get this into standard form, we've got to complete the square, okay? So let me show you the steps to do that because you're like, okay, Miss Name, I know how to do it for simple problems like these, but what do I do here? It's so much work. It's not bad. Okay, I've written some steps. The steps might seem a little overwhelming, but it's not too bad. So I want you to just uh, do the example with me, okay? Step one says, we're going to collect the x and y terms together. And if there's any constant, that means a number, like plus 5 or minus 3, something that doesn't have an x or a y, I want you to move it to the other side of the equal sign. Of the equal sign. Okay, let's look at uh, 1a. My x and y terms are already together. That means, see, this is my only x term. There's no other x's, so I'm good. It's all by itself. It's together. My x's are together. Now look, my y terms, I have two of them, and they're already together. When I say together, I mean right next to each other. Since they're already right next to each other, I'm good on the collecting x and y terms. And then... We need to make sure that any constant is on the other side of the equal sign. This constant, 24, is already by itself on the other side. So step one, in this case, is already finished. Okay, now we got to do step two. Step two says, rewrite with blanks, okay? So I need to rewrite this guy, but I'm going to leave blanks. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at uh, this problem. I've rewritten it. This is what I mean by leave blanks. So we're going to have x squared. Now, since there's no other x terms, this square is already finished, okay? There's nothing to complete here. Just leave it as it is. If there's no other term, there's no other x term, then just leave it like it is. We're good. We're done. But the y, there's a y squared, there's a 2y, so I'm going to have to complete this square. So we're going to rewrite this. Plus y squared plus 2y blank. Anytime there's two terms, you leave a blank after so you can complete that square. Equals 24. And if I put a blank on this side, you've got to put a blank on the other side also. Okay. Now, let me show you the connection. We need to now complete this square, okay? This is like expanded form. In my next step, I'm getting you ready. In your next step, you need to figure out what goes here. And you need to figure out what goes here. So see if you remember how we do that. We focus on the middle term. That's a plus 2. And I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to divide it by 2. And then square it. So 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Remember, this is always going to be positive. So it goes there. So you take your middle term, divide it by 2, and square it. Now... Okay, an equation is kind of like a scale. What I've just done is I've added a whole bunch of weight, a whole pound. I've added one pound to this side, so now my scale is off balance. To keep it balanced, I'm going to need to add the same amount of weight to the other side so that it returns to its original balanced state. So what I can add to one side, I need to add to the other side of the equal sign. So that's what the blank was for. If I add one here, I've got to add one here. Okay, now we're ready to complete the square. So remember, if this was a plus 2, what would this number have been? Oh yeah, we had cut it in half. We divided that by 2. 
So y plus 1 whole squared is the completed form of that square. And on the other side, I just got to combine now. 24 plus 1, that's 25. And believe it or not, we're already done. Let me just rewrite it nicely. Now, a common mistake is kids forget this squared when they're completing the square. You cannot forget that. Okay, because that's the only way that I can tell that I can show you that this would expand back out to y squared plus 2y plus 1, is if you have that squared. Without it, it's like you wrote, you went ahead and you wrote a completely different problem. Okay, so now let's find the center and the radius. So remember, to find the center, we're going to flip both the inside guy here and the inside guy here. Well, when there's a missing number, see if you remember, the missing number is always going to be 0. So for my x term, I put a 0, and now I'm going to flip this number. My y term is going to be a negative 1. Now let's find our radius. Remember, for the radius, you always have to show the work. This 25 is not the radius. On the other side of our equal sign, Remember, that's r squared, so I'm going to show the work off to the side. It's r squared that equals 25, and then we take square roots. So r equals 5. Our radius is 5. Okay, we just did our first problem. I hope you feel good. I hope you feel okay. All right, let's do um, problem 1b. This one should go faster. All right, so I've got to get this from its expanded form to a completed square. So remember, first step, i got to get my x and y's together. So notice my x squared and my minus 4x are already right next to each other, so we're good. My y squared, my plus 2y are already next to each other, so we're good. And then my constant is already all by itself on the other side of the equal sign. So step one's finished. Step two. Step two had said, let's look back at our notes. Step two says, okay, now I'll rewrite with blanks. So after your x terms, I need a blank. After my y terms, I need a blank. And we've got to put the blanks on the left and the right. So if we have two blanks on the left, I'm going to need two blanks on the right. Let's go ahead and fill those in. So I've got x squared minus 4x blank plus y squared plus 2y blank equals 4 and 1 blank for each to match. Okay, now we've got to complete this square. We've got to complete this square. So let's do it. If you're like me, I like to go ahead and set up my next step right away. Like that. And then I'm going to fill in my blanks. Okay. So let's focus on our middle term. Let's focus on the middle term. That's minus 4. That means that this guy would have had to be minus 2. You take that number, you divide it by 2. That goes here. And then when we square that number, we're going to get a plus 4. That's what goes here. If I add 4 pounds to this side, I have to add 4 pounds to this side. So again, middle number divided by 2. That's what goes here. Then when we square it, that, so the inside guy goes here, and then the squared version is what goes right there. Let's do the second part. Okay, take the middle number, divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is positive 1. And then square that, so plus 1 here. If I add 1 pound to this side, I have to add 1 pound to this side. So let's go ahead and just combine. So we're done completing the square. Now we just have to combine these constants. What's 4 plus 4? 8 plus 1? That's 9. So in my next step, I'm just going to write equals 9. We're done. Now we just have to rewrite it nice and neat. So that's x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 9. Now my center, I need an x and a y. So to get my x, I'm going to flip the inside of the x term, positive 2. Flip the inside, negative 1. Now let's find our radius. So focus here. r squared equals 9. Square roots on both sides so we can actually find our r, our radius. 
and r equals 3. Yay! We're finished. So we got this from our expanded form right here to our completed square form right here at the end. Let's do one more problem. This time we'll graph. Okay, number 2a. So I want you to notice what's different about this problem. Look at your x's and y's. Are they already together? Notice, here's my first x term, here's my next x term. They're separated. This is the first time that we're encountering this issue. The other thing to keep in mind is your y terms are separated. And then finally, there's a constant, and it should be on the other side. So we've got some work to do to get step one. So let's rewrite these, okay? I need x squared, and then I'm going to bring them my minus 4x next to it. So the sign in front stays with the term. So x squared minus 4x. I'm going to leave a blank because I already realized, okay, I'm going to have two. I'm going to have two x's. I need to complete that square. Next, I have plus y squared. And I'm going to join that with plus 8y. Notice everything has a sign in front. I'm going to leave a blank. Now, how do I move that 5 to the other side? Well, you can't just magically write, okay, it's on the other side now. No, 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 no. We've got to use our normal mathematical operations. So if I want to move 5 to the other side, I've got to add 5 to both sides. So it disappears from here, and I end up with equals 5 on the right side. What am I forgetting? If I have two blanks here, then I need two blanks here. There. Okay, now let's do the next step. So if you're like me, we'll set it up. We'll set up the next step because we know we're going to complete the square. There's always a plus sign in the middle, by the way. That is part of the equation for a circle. So there's always a plus sign. You don't have to ask why or any details. That's just always there. equals, and then we'll fill in this number when we figure out what this all adds up to. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, focus on the middle term, cut it in half. Okay, so what's negative 4? Divided by 2. Negative 2, that goes here. Our signs match. Now we square that, so it goes here. Negative 2 times itself is positive 4. Okay, let's do the next one. Oh, oh, I forgot. Add 4 on this side to keep it balanced. Okay, let's do the next one. So our middle term is plus 8. So positive 8 divided by 2. That's what goes in here. That's plus 4. And then when I do 4 times 4, I get plus 16 on this side. So I should add 16 to that side. So now let's figure out this constant term. What's 5 plus 4? It's 9. Plus 16 is 25. Cool. It's a nice balanced equation. Now we just got to write it nice and neat. So I have x minus 2 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 25. All right, see if you can figure out the center and the radius yourself. Try not to look up. So did you get your center to be 2, negative 4? And your radius, 5? If so, you did a good job. Now we just have to graph this. So your graph should look nicer than mine. But we're going to first go to our center. So at negative, or sorry, at positive 2 on the x-axis, and then down 4 on the y-axis. And now we got to put our radius of 5. So remember, we got to count up 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Got to go to the right. We got to go to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
And then try to make as nice a circle as you can. It's okay if it's not perfect, but it should look something like that. And then just label. Center is here at 2, negative 4. And then our radius, that's this distance right here, or this distance across here, our radius equals 5. Nice job. All right, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time.